Hey everyone, it's Dusk Shadow Brony back with more Spy Fox. This is Spy Fox 2, some assembly required. My personal favorite of 1 and 2, I like I said, I have not played 3. Um, I like the characters better in 2, which is why I guess I like 2 better, but when I, I guess when it comes to gameplay, I, uh, I preferred 1. But, um... If you guys are just joining me, and you haven't seen my previous Spy Fox, Spy Fox is a game that's from my childhood. I silenced my Facebook. Why is it still going off? Hang on. As I was saying, if I was rudely interrupted, Spy Fox is a game from my childhood. Uh, it's a point-and-click adventure. It's meant for small children, yes, but I was a small child then. I don't know how many of you... Are old enough or have been around long enough to know what Spy Fox, Freddy Fish, Put Put, Pajama Sam, those kind of games are. Um, mostly because my recording software can't produce in 60 frames per second. This time my recording is 30 frames per second. But I assure you, it is going to be in 1080p HD. And if you can't see that, that means the video hasn't finished processing and you need to give it more time. Um, I plan on getting Sony Vegas Pro and... That allows me to produce in 60 frames per second, and I I think Spy Fox 3, I'll record and upload in 60 frames per second because I'll be getting a new computer, so I can actually, um, you can actually see me play in 60 frames per second on a new computer. And I know there's not much difference in recording 60 frames per second on a game this old, but hey, you do what you can. With that, let's dive in. Somewhere in the Alps. So, Agent Gracefully, you're part of our spy exchange program from Canada? Try not to say my name too often. I'm trying to travel incognito. Actually, you're traveling in the Alps. What do you have there? I got something very important out of a smelly trash can. Well, of course it's smelly. If you got it out of a trash can, you need a hobby. No, not smelly. Smelly! As in the society of meaningless evil larceny lying and yelling. Of course, our evil nemesis. Spy Fox, Sounds you've got like to get this trash bag to Spy Corps <laughs> headquarters. <laughs> no, I've got a better idea. I'd better get this trash bag to Spy Corps headquarters. Oh, and take this gadget from Professor Quack. You may need it. What is it? Dehydrated steam. Inside of this little pill is a pair of skis. All you have to do is add water. Fine. I'm and sorry, pray I'm tell, why would I need a pair of skis? I came to get information, not recreation. You may need them to get away from those bad guys. Good luck, Spy Fox. Okay, so as I was saying, um... Spy Fox, in case you didn't notice, is based off of James Bond. Bad guys? Doctor Quack is... Got water? Q. Spy Fox, obviously, is James Bond. And you'll see some characters later that you may be able to relate to other James Bond characters. I've got to get out of here. Although this would be a nice getaway cottage, I've got to get this bag to Spy Corps Headquarters. So, let's see. Okay, this is where you keep Here's where gadgets. I keep my spy gadget. You use this notepad to talk to different characters, and these and any other items are usually items that you use to interact with other characters. This is where you can... Mobile contact. Command Center! But we're not connected to that, so I won't do anything. This is where you Fun. play a uh, minigame. And obviously, quit. load quick save here, so let's just save. Here. And, um... If you haven't seen my Spy Fox 1 gameplay, I'd strongly recommend seeing that. It's not like a requirement for you. This is my Spy Watch! It's a requirement for you, but I really would suggest you can look at it. And with this kind of game, you just click on things, and silly things will happen. 
Mind you, again, this is a kid's game, so the stuff you see will be really silly. And so obviously... It's so a bucket of water! You obviously need to use this on that. Water, work your magic! The dehydrated skis are now rehydrated. Dehydrated skis? Like seriously, how does that even freaking work? Feet don't fail me now. Skis, I mean. What? Actually, why? Like, no, this game is just a lot more interaction. And what appears to be just cutscenes, you can actually make minor choices. Like, know, you'll see in a moment. I wonder which way I should go. Let's go the dangerous route, or let's you go the safe route one time and go the dangerous route another. We'll see. I wonder which way I should go. And then we all deliberately see what happens is. And if there are each voice will be slightly different things, it'll all come to the same outcome in the cutscene. Did you miss me, Chief? So you've analyzed the trash bag, I see. And what have you found? You see how big Chief it's is. a model I box one one thousand scale voice. for one evil robot. On the side, it says "Some Assembly Required." Sounds like an excellent title for one of my adventures. It has a mailing label that reads "To La Roche, Care of Chateau La Roche, World's Fair." Hmm. Inside the box are assembly instructions. You'd better take these with you, Spy Fox. Wow! You can learn I mean, a lot by look reading. Look at the size of, of just If Smelly is involved, they must be up to their <laughs> usual no Fox goodness. Jumps. You'd best See, go check out this world's fair. Monkey Penny and Quack have already set up the mobile command so center. High. I'm on my way, Chief. Spy Fox, are you okay? Shaken but not stirred. Monkey Penny. Obviously referring to Monkey Penny. So it looks like we're on to something big. Okay, so yes, I is think Smelly is up to some monkey business, like, Monkey Penny, and it looks like it's up to you, me, and Professor Quack to get hands, to the meaning, bottom of it. Maybe he just has huge hands, and he's extremely short and small. Well, you and me and anyway, Monkey Penny. I brought well, the assembly instructions I got out of the smelly trash bag. Like. Well, of course it's smelly you if you got it out of a trash bag, Spy Fox. No, Monkey Penny, not smelly. Smelly, as in the Society for Meaningless Evil Larceny Lying and Yelling. Our evil nemesis. And again, sounds like a government. Why don't you leave those assembly instructions here with me? Then you can refer to them whenever you're back here at the Mobile Command Center. And remember, you can contact me via your spy watch at any time. Don't forget to check out the spy vending machine, Spy Fox. It's full of new gadgets for you to try out. I'm sure you'll find some of them quite useful. Thanks! Now I need to go get busy and go give that LaRoche at the Chateau LaRoche a visit and find out just what he's up to. Alright, so... Honestly, at this point, I'm not going to explain much more about how the game works or about it. Um... Like, I'd really suggest if you want to know what's going on or how it works, watching my playthrough of Spy Fox 1, that Spy Fox and Dry Serial. Because I pretty much give a comprehensive explanation of how the entire game works. Each video part is a bit long, but that's because I misjudged my recording sessions. Um, as for this one, I'm going to keep each to around 20 minutes, I'd say. And um, that may result in being three parts instead of two, even though it's actually a very short game. But I just feel like part one of my last one was 30 minutes, part two was 40 minutes. And I just feel like that was just too much. So I'm just going to do three 20 minute ones because it's about, say about an hour if I, know, if I because I don't have to explain much anymore.
All right, so here we're going to try to get in. Are you happy with your job as a service guard? Oh yes, quite happy, thank you. Still, I like to immerse myself in the peaceful harmony of bungee jumping. And he's gonna stop Excuse me, place. sir. What seems to be the problem? Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad tidings, but unfortunately, I cannot allow you to enter through the service entrance. I'm sorry, and I can only let cashiers with proper ID in today. See? It has the job title of cashier and a matching photo. I seem to have lost my ID. Can you let me in without one? I feel your pain, sir. Really, I do. Unfortunately... It seems that I'll have to find a way to get the proper ID. Well, I wonder where we get a photo. Would it be from this giant flashing photo booth? A free photo booth. Just one of the many joyous pleasures in life. So yeah, you can mess around with this if you want to. Anyway, so... We need to change this Cashier. Arena. France. I always like France the best, but Spy Fox will say different things about how he likes it. So we'll try this. I look ridiculous. So he doesn't like that, so let's try that again. Let's say. Dentist! The photo I already have should go in the recycle bin. And then we can try to see how he It dances. looks great. Alright, so we'll just do dentist then because he likes that. I mean it actually doesn't affect that you can actually create an ID in which Spy Fox doesn't like how he looks. But I just like to do what he wants, I guess. Alright, and here is where we This is a rather cool looking device. What is it? One of those you novelty gadgets that lets you see what you'll look like in 50 years? It's an ID maker. Of my own creation, of course. It's for making identification cards. Fascinating. How does it work? You place a photo in the photo slot, choose an occupation, and any name you like, then press the Process ID button. A completed ID will pop out of the machine. Professor, you're amazing. What if I made an ID, but then I change my mind and want to make a different one? Well, if you don't like the ID you created, you can make another card. Just reset the name and occupation. Insert a new photo, then press the Process ID button again. That sounds like fun. Creating false ID cards is something only secret agents can do. And then only when we're on a case. Right! Alright, so obviously we put in our photo. There! Now I can make an ID card. So we need to the jobs cashier. Ask. Dick. Jump. Cashier. And we can pick a name. Nance. No. Muriel. No. Carlton. I guess it's okay name. Let's go with that. Professor Quack's machine works perfectly. My identification card is complete. I expect that up. this will come in quite handy. So now we have a fake cashier ID. We have to just go back to security entrance. I mean... I suppose you're probably wondering why we can't use the main entrance. I'll show you why in just a moment. Hmm, the entrance is closed and it's locked up tighter than an impervious steel door. A reference to the first game. Oh look, Godzilla in the background. Anyway, so we just do this. That theme plays when I can do something right. Here you are, sir. One cashier ID card. Oh my, I'm so happy that you were able to find it. Let me guess. It was in your other pants, wasn't it? Why? Yes, it was. You must be psychic. If you'll excuse me, I'm late for work and they need me in the restaurant. Oh, I understand. I won't keep you any longer. I'll just keep your ID on file for you, Carlton. Keep up the good work. Have a spectacular day. And if I don't see you tomorrow... So, you can screw around <laughs> here. here. Stir, stir, stir. What kind of cake would you bake for a baseball team? Why, a bunt cake, of course. Just say different things. Are there any great moments in your career that really stand out? 
Well, I remember the time I fell into the colander. And what happened when you fell into the colander? I strained myself. No. God, I even I love puns, and that was just bad. Anyway, we go in here next. And here is our villain. Ah, Napoleon LaRoche. I should have known you'd taken up with the likes of Smelly. So Spycor has sent the famous spy fox to try and stop my plans for world domination. World domination? I'll try to keep uh, quiet during the uh, cutscenes from now on, I'm ah, sorry. Since you are one of the few people who could possibly understand my genius, I will explain my entire plan to you in nauseating detail. You see, I reversed the scale on the uh, smelly evil dog bot assembly no instructions. I've created a 1000 to 1 scale, fully functioning evil just dog bot. Just where do you think you can I hide such a monstrosity? Just you so silly spy. If You're I'm standing in it. Or if you can't hear them, then of course, you you've disguised the, the evil dog bot as the centerpiece for the World's Fair. Complete with a revolving restaurant. One has to eat, no? Observe. The means to my world domination! I got People it. buying yeah, tickets for the world's fair do not realize that as they file to the turnstile, they are unwittingly winding yes, the is. highly advanced clockwork mechanism within the evil dog bot. When the one millionth person has filed through, the dog bot, now wound again. to maximum capacity, will embark upon its horrifying rampage of destruction! <laughs> <laughs> I love that plan. Oh, once I have yeah, unleashed I the dog bot, all the world's leaders will sit up and beg for mercy! It is unstoppable! It cannot be called off because it has no off switch! Yes! I have removed the off switch and hidden it somewhere in the world's fair! So cleverly, so subtly, that you will never find it! That's what you think, LaRoche! Even if you did find the off switch, you would still need the activation code to turn the switch off. And even if you had the off switch and the activation code, you could never hope to get past the diabolically clever security device located in the evil dog bot's Achilles heel, which is the only way into the dog bot's inner workings. It is hopeless, Monsieur Le Fox. There's no way you can beat me! <laughs> You'll never get away with this, LaRoche. Oh, I think I will. And now, Monsieur the Spy Fox, adieu! <laughs> Judging by those monstrous metallic molars, I've been imprisoned in the dog bot's mouth. How humiliating. I must find a way out of this cell so I can stop that evil roach. <laughs> if I could only reach that fire escape through these teeth. I can gather information about La Roche with this talk balloon. Yeah, see, so if you use talk balloons on other characters, you can get information and sometimes open up new choices in dialogue. La Roche's goons didn't follow the assembly instructions close enough. They seem to have left a few gears missing out of this contraption. Alright, so, um... This, this one... gear must go somewhere in here. This yeah, gear right. is too big to go there. Oh, in here. This gear is too small. I'm not failing at a kid's game. Shut up, don't judge me. Alright, so it does have to overhang a tiny bit, so... Is that overhang enough? I don't think so. I bet this loose gear is supposed to go somewhere. Yeah. No. I wonder where this gear goes. It doesn't go anywhere. So I think it is this one. This gear is too small. No, I'm not feeling a kid's game. Stop judging me. That did the trick. Well, I guess it's like they say, the tooth shall set you free. Talk about and escaping by the skin that. of your teeth. Now we to stop out. LaRoche and his evil plans for world domination. My spy watch is beeping. I'd better answer it. Please stand by. Spy Fox. Agent Walter Wireless has intercepted a microfish message from Dottie Dash. Where is it coming from? It sounds like it's coming from an exhibit called We World. We World, eh? Sounds silly. The message is staticky, and Walter Wireless needs to get closer to hear it. 
You can pick him up here at the Mobile Command Center. By the way, I've recorded Napoleon LaRoche's evil plans and I'm sending them to you via the Spy Watch. I look forward to hearing the dish. Monkey Penny, out. Alright, so I know... With each playthrough, I'm gonna say this for the people who still haven't seen the first one. It, it varies. There are like many things that can change. I played this through four and once recently. So, um... Hold up there, sir! You have a stamp on your hand? No, I can't say that I do. I better stamp your hand so you can get back into the fair. There you are, sir! Have a nice day! Thank you. Anyway, as I was saying, um... What was I saying? Oh, yeah. I have played through this once before recently and once before, many times when I was a kid. So I do remember some things I have to do. But since this is slightly different than the last time I played, Spy Fox, I don't know. I've been waiting for you. Smelly exactly is up to their usual bag of dirty tricks, I see. I do Walter Wireless, Spy Corps' top tracking buff. Good to be working with you again, Walt. Uh, you too, Spy Fox. The last time I ended up with a fever from being cat scratched. Right. Sorry We're about that. So, game. you picked up a microfish message from Dotty Dash. That's right, but all I could make out was something regarding an off-switch activation code before the signal went dead. I've got to find Dotty Dash, Spy Fox. This must be important. The signal was traced to an exhibit in the fair called Wee World. Wee World, eh? Sounds like your kind of place. Well, hop aboard, Walter, and I'll get you into this Wee World. I'm in there like swimwear. Heh, <laughs> that's my line. Alright, so... What we're going to need is... We're going to need this. A spy key replicator can. What's the key to this gadget, Professor Quack? That's a one-shot camera, like no other in the world. It's specifically made for replicating keys. You take a picture of the key you want to replicate, then bake it in an oven. The picture shrinks down and hardens into an exact duplicate of the key you took the picture of. It can only hold one picture at a time, but you can take a picture over another picture. If you bake a picture into the wrong key, just insert the key back into the camera and it will turn back into key film. Yeah, I'm sorry, what did you say? Don't sense. worry, it's a point and shoot easy bake gadget. It's a good thing I need my fiber. Okay, so we can only hold up to four spy gadgets at a time, but I know specifically why. No, no, no. 